Hi everyone and welcome back. This is a quick video to show you how you can add dummy inventory data in Netbox. If you are following along with my other videos, you should have Netbox system up and running at this stage. First of all, the main purpose of this tutorial is to demonstrate how you can have dummy data on Netbox in a lab environment only and not in a production environment. So please be aware that this procedure will destroy and replace your current inventory and database. So make sure that you back up your lab environment first before following the steps in this how-to guide. You will also need to have CLI access with sudo privileges. So without further ado, let's get on with it. As you can see on the screen, there are no data in Netbox. The number of sites that currently configured is zero. So is with the tenants, contacts, as well as the VRFs and so on and so forth. If I go to devices, for instance, you can see that I haven't got any configurations or any data that is configured on the devices or modules um, and so on and so forth. So the first step is to download some files from this link, which I shared in the description below. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the green button and I'm going to start downloading the zip file. Once that has been downloaded, I will open up the folder. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to unzip that file. And then I'm going to open it. So before we proceed, we just need to find out what is the current version that I have on Netbox. So if I go back on Netbox, go home and then scroll all the way down you can see that the current version is 3.6.3. .3. So the file that I'm interested in is this one. But feel free if you want to copy all these files to your server, regardless. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up FileZilla, and I'm going to refresh this. And on the right-hand side, this is my home directory. So I'm going to pick the file in question, and I'm going to upload it. Once the file has been uploaded successfully, what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up a PuTTY session and I'm going to start typing the IP address so that I can SSH to the server, to the netbox server. And then I'm going to hit open and I'm going to put the admin credentials. The first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to check that the file that I've just uploaded is does exist in my home directory, which it does. And then the next step, um, I'm going to move that file from the current location into the following location, which is forward slash opt forward slash netbox forward slash netbox. And then it's going to prompt you for a sudo password. So I'm going to enter mine. Um, and then I will verify that the file has been moved successfully, which you can see it has. And then the next step is to change the current directory from the where I am at the moment to, to the netbox directory. So at this point, if I issue the command ls-l, you can see that the file in question is here. Um, and then at this point, what I can do, I can go ahead and stop all the netbox services. I'm going to hit that command. And then what I'm going to do next, I'm going to remove or drop the database, um, which is called Netbox. It might be different in your case. It depends on if you change the name of the database from Netbox to something else. Um, if so, then you would need to change that command accordingly. But in my case, I haven't. So I'm going to keep it as is. And then I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, the database has been dropped. And then what I'm going to do next, I'm going to actually create a new database and I'm going to call it Netbox. And as you can see, the database has been created. Next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to enable the uh, virtual Python virtual environment and I'm going to activate it. Um, and then the next step is to execute the manage.python and set the migrate as part of the parameters. And then I would hit enter. And that is going to take some time.
Okay, guys, I'm going to then issue that command. And this is going to load all the data from that file that we just uploaded. And then I'm going to issue that command to do some cleanup. And I'm going to type yes. And then finally, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start the netbook services by issuing this command. So at this point, we have completed the steps. So if I go back to my netbox and then try to log in. Now the current credentials have changed from whatever a admin credentials you had into admin um, as the username and then the password all lowercase is going to be admin. And as you can see, guys, the there are number of sites that have been configured. There are a number of tenants that have been configured. So is with the contacts, um, VRF, aggregates, prefixes, IP ranges, IP addresses, VLANs, etc, etc. And if we were to explore some of these, so if I go to organizations and click on sites, you can see that there are a number of different sites that have been created. Some of these sites that are based in, in New York, others based in Virginia, so on and so forth. So if I go to regions, for instance, you can see that we have Africa, Asia, China, Europe, so on and so forth. If I go to racks, you can see that there are multiple racks have been created. If I scroll all the way down, there are about 42 racks that have been created. And then if I go to tenants, there are 11 tenants that have been created. If I go then to devices, for instance, and click on the devices objects. Um, there are 72 devices that have been configured and if we were to explore one of them, let's say, um, let's go, let's just pick the first one for instance. You can see all the information related to that device, the regions, the sites, the rack, where it's located, what is the role for it, it's PDU, and the status is active, so on and so forth. If I go to platforms, for instance, there are different three platforms. Cisco iOS and Ubuntu. If I go to device types, let's say, um, you can see that we have Juniper as well as Cisco and APIC and APC and just some generic devices as well. Um, if I go to interfaces, let's say, you can see that we've got multiple interfaces that are associated with um, Cisco and other devices as well um, and so on and so forth. Okay, guys, if you would like to change the password from admin to whatever you would like to change it to. So you just need to go to the admin profile um, and then go to preferences. And then if you click on password, you would need to set the old password, which is admin and then the new password. And then once you're happy with that, then you just click save and the password has been updated. So if I were to log out and try to log back in again, with the admin credentials that I've just set. You can see that I've managed to log in again and I have access to all the new inventory or the dummy data inventory um, for my own use case. If you found this video helpful, please kindly don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you never miss our future tutorials and tech insights. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop a comment below and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember guys to keep learning and stay curious and inspired. And until next time, peace.